The Lord Jesus said that they were going to kill him, crucify him, but that he would be risen on the third day or resurrected. They didn't believe him. My brothers and sisters, this lesson lets us know that he is risen from the dead. This is the Union Gospel Press Sunday School lesson. There are notes for this lesson. I'll leave a link in the description below and in the comment section. Click the link, get your notes, your Sunday School books for the Union Gospel Press Sunday School is now in session. Join me. Let's go. Teaching the Word of God in the spirit of excellence. Join Elder Rodney Jones with our Sunday School lesson. Building and equipping the children of God. Grab your Bibles, grab your notes, get your Union Gospel Press, it's been a long time. Thank you for your patience. I will be in and out as we still try to get back on track because all the Sunday school publishers are switching these lessons around. There are some lessons where the digital copy is different from the printed book and it's the same company. We'll explain that later. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Sunday School Lesson is taught by Pastor Rodney Jones. I'm the pastor of the New Nation Anointed Ministries Church of God in Christ. We're located 1700 West 87th Street in the city of Chicago. The zip code is 60620. If this is your first time, leave me a comment in the comment section below. I'd like to welcome you. Take a moment to hit that subscribe button and make sure you click that bell notification and click all so YouTube will notify you. Bing! He just uploaded another lesson. Today we got a very good one. Uh, we're dealing with risen from the dead. We're in John's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 1 through 10 and verses 19 through 20. This is our Resurrection Sunday. I thank God that he got up with all power in his hand. It is also called Easter, but I won't mess with that. Today's date for discussion is April 9th, 2023. Um, this is the Union Gospel Press Sunday School lesson. Very interesting points that we're going to pull out in this lesson as we move forward. I will be quoting passages of scriptures from the other gospel writers. Always remember that whenever you deal with the gospel writer, make sure that the others is not already doing it. Let's get into the lesson. Father, we thank you for this very moment in this hour. We pray you will be done in Jesus name. Amen. Let's look at this information. So the Bible says the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark, early when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre and see if the stone taken away from the sepulchre. She then runneth or then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple. The other disciple whom Jesus loved. Uh, yes, the other disciple whom Jesus loved, who is the writer of this book. Yeah, something like that. Don't worry. I still graduated. Come on, somebody. Yeah, he is the disciple of this book. And she says, uh, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. And we know not where they have laid him. So it's been at least three days since the death of Jesus Christ. The reason I'm talking kind of on the low side is because we open up our church so that the people are able to exercise their constitutional rights to vote. Yes, we are a voting location and there's heavy traffic coming in here. We're trying to make sure that everyone has an opportunity. The members of this church that lives in the community and the community that are not members of this church. Plus we serve on Tuesdays. We serve the community every Tuesday as well. We've been doing this before the pandemic started. So you may hear some noise. 
Number two, he said that he would rise in three days, Mark 9 and 31. Point number three is they had to take Jesus' body down after his crucifixion because the Jews' preparation had drew nigh. That's John 19 and 31. Therefore, they were not able to properly bury Jesus. They were not able to give him the proper spices and the proper burial that he would need or even deserve as a Jew. So Joseph of Arimathea placed his body in his own personal empty tomb, Matthew 27, 57 through 60. The women followed him and then to see where they would lie, the body of Jesus. And then they went to get the spices so that after the feast, they would come back to continue the preparation of his body. Luke 23 and 56. Pilate allowed them to take and make a uh, watch uh, to make sure that his body would stay there because it was alleged that his disciples might take his body to say that he had risen. Matthew 27 and 65. The women, while they were on their way, were trying to figure out who was going to roll the stone away because the Bible said that it was a great stone. You'll probably hear me say this again. But in Matthew 28 and 2, the Bible says that an angel came down and rolled the stone away and there was an earthquake. Now, John only speaks of Mary Magdalene. And the other writer speaks of the other women. There was another Mary. That's Mark 16 and 1. It took place at the end of the Sabbath as it began to dawn on the first day. That's Matthew 28 and 1, which is another reason why we have worship on the first day, because it's the day that the Lord had risen. We now call Sunday the day of the Lord or the Lord's day. So Mary and the other women bought spices to anoint him. Mark 16 and 1. There appears to be an urgency in her heart to do this. It's very dark during this time, and yet she and others continue their journey in the dark. They waited until after the Sabbath to keep from breaking the laws. That's Luke 50, 23 and 56. She brings a group of women with her. Where are the fellows? But I'm laying the law. And there was no time to fully prepare his body before the Passover. That's Luke 23, 53 through 54. If I'm moving fast, just go ahead and jot down and get the notes. So the question was, who is going to roll the stone away? That's Mark 16 and 3. The Bible lets us know that this was a great stone and the women couldn't do it themselves. Mark 16 and 4, therefore God sent an angel down. Isn't it something where God sent an angel to do something that man wants to do but can't do? But though man can't do it, he doesn't stop moving forward. Listen, the women didn't have the strength to move the stone, but they didn't stop moving forward to figure out who was going to move the stone. The Bible lets us know that there was a great earthquake, Matthew 28 and 2. The angel of the Lord came down and he moved the stone. But what got me was, I don't know at what point this earthquake took place. I do know the purpose of the earthquake was that an angel came down to move the stone away, yet these women continued. Now, either the earthquake took place before they left or during their, on their direction or their journey, but they did not stop their journey, although they were walking in the dark. So she runs and she tells Peter, and the disciple whom Jesus loves. And uh, we do understand that Peter's name is always called first, but nowhere do we find where Peter is the leader or that Jesus had given him uh, to be the leader. He gave him the keys of the kingdom. Yes, he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. But we don't see where he says, Peter, you're the number one man. Yet it's always Peter, James, and John. So uh, she told the other apostles as well, or apostles, sorry, my bishop, Bishop Roland T. Sanders says, stop saying apostle, it's apostle, Matthew 28 and 8. And they told it to the 11 as well, and the rest, as Luke 24 and 9. But their words seemed to be as idols, and they didn't believe them, Luke 24 and 11. The Bible says that her statement was they took his body, and we don't know where they have laid them. 
And none of them remember the scripture that said that he would rise in John 20 and 9. The chief priests and Pharisees remembered Jesus said three days, Matthew 27 and 62. And they didn't believe the men also, Mark 16 and 12. They didn't believe because their hardness of the heart. The other apostles didn't believe. They didn't just believe, didn't believe the women. They didn't believe the men either. That's Mark 16 and 4. It was this Mary Magdalene, which I'm not going to talk about. But please do not call Mary Magdalene the prostitute. That's something started by somebody else. We don't have scripture that states that she was. We do have scripture that says Jesus cast seven demons out of her. So I'm going to keep on moving. There are some more points on here on the notes. I'm going to move on to verses three, four and five. Peter, therefore, went forth and that other disciple. John always referred to himself as either the other disciple or the disciple whom Jesus loved. So it is he and Peter that went and they came to the sepulcher. So they ran both of them together. Both of them ran together and the other did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher and he stooping down. The one that stooped down, I'll show you the one who stooped down. That's this guy right here. The other disciple looking in, he saw the linen clothes lie, yet he did not go in. And the question is why, but we don't know, so we won't deal with it. And why I say that? It's because I read in somebody's commentary that said that he waited because Peter was his leader. We need to be careful on making statements like that. Scripture does not give us the reason why he didn't go in. He just waited for Peter to go in. Please don't overdo leadership scriptures. After hearing such news that the Lord's body was missing, they ran. Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved ran together. And for some reason, the other disciple outruns Peter from this point. Scripture doesn't say why he outran. Some believe it was because his age difference. Others believe it was due to the urgency of the one whom he loved. Scripture does not say why, but that it happened. Point number four is the disciple whom Jesus loved reaches the sepulcher first, but doesn't go in. It doesn't say why, but it says that he did not go in. It could have been a respect for Peter, whatever the case may be. I won't even imagine. All I know is he stooped down and looked in, but did not go in before Peter. When he stooped down, he saw the linen clothes, but he did not see the body of Jesus. Come on now. So then come at Simon Peter following him. Peter, you finally caught up to me, Doc. Welcome to my, my club. And went into the sepulcher, and he seeth the linen clothes, but no body. Now, if they stole the body, why would they remove him out of the clothes? Not only did they see the linen clothes, but they see the napkin that was about his head, lying with the linen clothes, but um, a head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Did you see that? It was in a place by itself. So Simon Peter catches up to the disciple whom Jesus loved. Peter goes into this empty tomb only to see no body but the linen clothes. The linen clothes that was wrapped around Jesus is in a different spot than the rest. He gazes at the clothing of Jesus, but does not find his body. The Bible said that he seeth. Seeth means to look closely at, to gaze, to look with interest, and for a purpose, usually indicating the careful observation of details. Peter observed very deeply the linen clothes. He's probably in shock as he gazes at what he seeth at Jesus' clothing. He no doubt inspects the clothing itself. 
He sees that it was wrapped together in a place by itself. The way wrap means to fold, to roll or fold, or to fold neatly. They're not like us. This was gently wrapped and placed there strategically by itself. So Peter gazes at the fact that the cloth that was on Jesus' face is by itself neatly in another spot. This cloth didn't fall in this spot. It was purposely placed there. It was said that the disciples stole the body of Jesus in Matthew 28 and 13. The question, if they were still his body, why would they take the napkin off and fold it neatly? And why would they leave the garments the way it was left? If you was a thief, the clothing, it would have fell off his face and hit the ground. But no, somebody strategically placed him there as if they were a gentleman or trying to leave a message. This was a sure sign, else the napkin would have fallen to the ground. And God leaves these details so there will be no doubt Jesus left them there. Come on, somebody. He left them there. Then went in also that other disciple. He finally goes in, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw. Now, here's the question. What did he believe? For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. It's getting kind of on the interesting side. Mm -hmm. So the disciple whom Jesus loved, he enters into this empty tomb where Peter is. He outruns Peter and stops and allows him to go in first. He enters the empty tomb, see the linen cloth, then he believes. What is it that this apostle believes? Does he believe that Jesus is risen? Does he believe they stole the body? Or does he believe what the women told him about the body missing? Hmm. What do you think? What do you think that it is that he believed at this moment? Did he believe that Jesus had risen? Did he believe that they stole the body? Or did they believe the account that the women said? What did they believe the class is open for discussion? The Bible said that they do not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. They didn't know the scripture that he must rise. Jesus told them that he would rise from the dead. That's Luke 24 and 46. The scripture that they didn't know would be Psalm 2 and 7. Peter references this passage talking about Jesus' resurrection, and you'll find that in Acts 13 and 33. Jesus said, they err, not knowing the scriptures, Matthew 22 and 29. Jesus later opened their understanding of the scriptures, Luke 24 and 45. The psalmist said that God would not leave his soul in hell, nor allow him to see corruption. That's Psalm 16 and 10, which also lets us know that he would rise from the grave. They didn't understand when Jesus said that he would rise, Mark 9 and 9. So although Jesus told them more than once of his resurrection, they didn't believe him. Neither did they know the Old Testament scriptures about his resurrection. The apostles claimed Jesus was Messiah, but they really didn't know who he was. They had known or had they known that he was true Messiah, they would have known the scriptures. And everyone um, went, to his, went to his own home is the prophecy that is fulfilled. I'm messing up in John 16 and 32. Everyone going to their own home is the prophecy that was fulfilled in John 16 and 32. We got it. I'm just trying to be quiet. I probably should just let it roll. Come on, somebody, I need to open up a floodgate and go ahead and teach this lesson. Then the same day, now, those of you that study, I want you to see this. I'm going to go here. The first day of the week cometh uh, Mary Magdalene. When does she do this? Early. You see that. 
So when you're studying and when you're teaching, always notice people, notice directions, notice commands, notice location, and no time of day. It started as early in the morning. Now when we get here, then that same day at evening. Now we're in the evening time, but it's still dealing with the same day. Being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. This is why the doors were shut. Came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said so, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. So the same day that Jesus rose, the first day of the week, he went to his disciples. John once again reminds his readers that this took place the first day of the week. Christ will be risen the first day early and eat with his disciples that evening. The doors were shut where they were because of the fear of the Jews. It was still fresh in what was going on. Usually you kill the shepherd, you kill the sheep. You kill the disciple, you kill the, the teacher, you kill the disciples. You kill the leader, you kill the followers if you can catch them because usually the followers are scattered. They had already taken their master and crucified them. They may have feared that they would take them as well. Jesus, knowing all things, he's got to calm his disciples. He reconnects with his disciples and brings peace into the atmosphere. Jesus walked in the midst of the disciples. Scripture does not say how. It just says he walked in. Don't know if he walked in the window, a door, or a wall, or the roof, whatever, but we find him coming in. The first thing he says unto them is, peace, be still. He had to speak peace unto them. Number two, they were fearful because of the Jews. Number three, their master has been crucified some three days ago. And some of them said that Jesus' body was taken away. So fear gripped the apostles. Then someone walked in the room looking like a spirit and the doors is shut. Jesus got to come to them. First thing he has to do is speak peace to them. But look what happened. Jesus, the Bible lets us know in Mark 16 and 14, he upbraided his disciples because of their unbelief. They had hardness of heart. They didn't believe the women. They didn't believe the men who were witnesses. And Jesus had to upbraid them because of this. Point number eight is as they were speaking in this room, Jesus appeared in the midst, Luke 24 and 36. And they were terrified and frightened and supposed that they had seen a spirit, Luke 24 and 37. But Jesus showed them his hands and his feet, Luke 24 and 40. The Bible says being the first day of the week from this day forward, this would be called the Lord's day. Revelations 1 and 10. The Christians worship on Sunday being the first day of the week because of this. Sabbath is Saturday, but since Jesus rose the first day, saints worship on the first day, which is a Sunday. The Bible said that he came and stood in the midst and said unto them, peace be unto you. First, Jesus showed himself to Mary. That's Mark 16 and 9. Then he showed himself to Simon called Peter. That's 1 Corinthians 15 and 5. Then of the 12, sometimes used to denote the apostles, 1 Corinthians 15 and 5. I really should say the second one that he showed himself to would be the two men on the road to Emmaus. And then possibly Peter. We don't know the order. We do know that when the men from Emmaus got back to the room, somebody said, that the Lord has risen for he have appeared unto Simon or to Cephas. Peter's name is Peter, it's Petros, it is Rock, it is Simon, uh, and it's Cephas. That's the same person. Then the Bible lets us know that he was seen above 500 brothers at once. 1 Corinthians 15 and 6. After that, he was seen of James. 1 Corinthians 15 
and 7. Then he showed himself to his apostles. Same chapter and verse. He showed unto them his hands and his side. The word showed means to exhibit or to permit to see, to prove or even to make known. His apostles had to be an eyewitness of his resurrection. They had to have seen with their own eyes and touched with their own hands as well. So that when they testify that they are eyewitnesses, they have to say that they physically saw him. And some would have to say that they physically touched him and Jesus showed them his hands and his sides. He takes the time to exhibit the marks of the nails and the sword to his disciples. He said that there would be witnesses of him. That's Acts 1 and 8. And the customs are strict on being eyewitness. The Jewish custom is very strict on eyewitnesses. Very strict on eyewitnesses. So he has to make sure that his disciples and apostles are eyewitnesses of his resurrection. Because Peter and James and John and the rest of them has got to spread this good news among the whole entire world. But in order for them to do this, they would have to be eyewitnesses. And therefore, Jesus reveals himself to his apostles so that they can be that. Now, all the disciples are present, we see. But Thomas was not there at this time. That's John 20, 24 through 29. Thomas saw Jesus after eight days. John 20, 26 through 27. The Bible says, then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. The word glad means to rejoice, be joyful or be full of joy. The disciples began to rejoice once they saw that Jesus was alive. This is an interesting lesson. This is a great lesson. Once again, Union Gospel Press, I'm trying to pull these lessons back together again continue to pray for me so you know i have started a you a facebook group if you go to facebook type in sunday school teachers lounge sunday school teachers lounge you can join that group and what we do is uh we communicate as a sunday school teachers group uh and yes i don't know how i'm gonna do this but i only got space for 100 people this coming Saturday, 6 p.m., there is a Zoom information. You better come early. Uh, we go over some of lessons, how we study, uh, different teachers meet one another. We talk about what, what comp happens in our classrooms. Uh, we exchange teaching methods, teaching tools, study methods, and all that kind of stuff with one another. Last time, we had 76 Sunday school teachers. So if you want to show up, you better show up quick, fast, in a hurry, because after 100, Zoom is going to lock the door. <laughs> so there it is. I thank you for your support. I miss you all so much. But uh, we're trying to see what we can do to pull things back together, preferably the Sunday School Publishers, of which we have the Kojic Legacy is merged with UMI Precepts for Living. However, last week and this week, they're doing two different lessons. And the UMI Precepts for Living, which is the book, has a digital copy on Amazon, and they have two different lessons. The Kojic is split up, and this week, the Kojic and the International lesson is together, and the UMI is separate. So I got things, some of everywhere, that I'm tired of our Sunday school publishers playing these games and giving us 30 scriptures to study as a Sunday school. So from time to time, I have not forsaken in Union Gospel. I love you all. You all are some of my favorite uh, classes, uh, but continue to pray for me that they will help us get this stuff back together. Okay? Remember my model, teaching the Word of God in the spirit of excellence. Peace. Peace.